Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 41 for Sea Beams, a spaceship game that I'm building in Unreal Engine 5 with my buddy Rich and a small development team. If you'd like to follow the project more closely, check out our Discord in the video description, and also you can wishlist the game right now on Steam. Both of those links are down below. Today we're going to talk about game optimization, new updates to our procedural material system, a major turret overhaul that's in the works that's going to allow us to be basically start building out as many weapons as we want. We have some new concept ship art, some even more complex music than I've shown before, and we got a pretty cool feature by GameStar. Let's dive into it. So GameStar, a pretty major gaming news outlet in Germany, uh, contacted us to feature our game in their show called Find Your Next Game. We did an interview and they requested some exclusive gameplay footage that they could cut up for their show. And it was cool seeing a live show in front of an actual audience in a, a theater like setting um, and then talking about our game. Uh, it of course was in German, so I was watching it with captioning and auto translating on. So uh, I'm sure the translations aren't exact. And I had a little bit of a chuckle when they referred to me as a YouTuber with endless money. <laughs> that I could just start my own game company and just make a game willy nilly. I think they are, of course, being a little tongue in cheek with it. And um, they seemed excited about the game and it was fun recording some exclusive footage for them. It forced me into designing a few environments and fixing up a few VFX for some exclusive footage. So shout out to GameStar for featuring our game. That was super cool to see. And it's also just a good time to maybe address marketing a little bit for any indie developer out there, I think marketing is just as important as making a good game. You got to get people to know about your game and there's a thousand different approaches to marketing, but getting any YouTube channel or any uh, game news source to feature you is a big part of getting the word out there. The cooler your game looks when they feature you, uh, the more conversions you'll get. And we haven't really started a huge marketing push yet because we still have a lot of work to do with getting this game into a place where uh, I think it can be visually much more marketable. Uh, but once that time comes, I think we'll be focusing a bit more on talking about marketing tactics and whatnot. Also, shout out to Will, our VFX guy, who's been quite busy, but managed to put in a little bit of time quickly prototyping a railgun VFX for our recording. Now, while we're on weapons, Rich has been busy working on a super turret template. He's basically building out a template that we should be able to use to build more or less all of the turrets in the game. And this is a quick little preview of our size two inertial turret that uh, will hopefully get into the game for next devlog. Now, one of the ongoing tools that we have been building is a layered procedural material system. This is kind of similar to what Epic has been talking about with Substrate and how that can work, but Substrate is beta technology. We don't know if it's ever gonna fully make it into the game or not. Um, so John's designed a custom layered material system for us to use. And it's super useful because we can make materials in game. We can adjust them in game. We can get the colors and the lighting just right. I can literally uh, change sliders and color input while running the game and watch it update in the game. Um, incredibly useful for getting things to look exactly how you want at runtime. Um, his latest addition to this system has been gradients and stripes and camos. We're going to add a little bit more to the, the camos and the stripe technology, but um, even with gradients and stripes alone, it's allowed us to create a much more realistic looking spaceship in game dynamically and not being locked into a specific style. We can change it up for each skin that we have very quickly. It doesn't require going into say substance painter and coming up with some new materials and exporting a whole bunch of new textures. It's all feeding off of the same texture libraries to minimize RAM, which is great. It's also going to help us realize some of our concept ships that are being worked on right now. Um, this first sketch here is by Island, and I uh, sort of used it as reference for Kruger to start drawing out a ship that would fit in with our destroyer. I used his concept there and blocked out a white box model real quick with some of the things I liked. Kruger took another stab at sketching over that white box and then coloring it. And now we have a size one style patrol ship that will flit, fit in with our good guy fleet, which kind of matches up with our destroyer that you saw before. 
Here you can see its scale reference next to that destroyer there. And we also have a early prototype of a white box railgun frigate that um, will hopefully match up stylistically with this fleet, but we got a little work to do on that one. Now, Island, our other concept artist who's already designed our bad guy battleship, he's designed several fighters for our bad guy fleet. Uh, I challenged him with making a missile frigate for the bad guys. And he came up with a bunch of rough concepts. We worked through some ideas behind it. Um, I built out a few white boxes for him to look at. He came up with his own white box. Uh, I give him the thumbs up, and now we have a nice final concept for our bad guy missile frigate. If my design goals go to plan, then this should be a pretty fun early game challenging ship to fight against as it'll have a lot of missile firepower and it can deal a lot of damage at range, forcing you to make some tactical decisions. Do you try and take out this ship first or deal with its fighters or escort ships? Now, Peter Chambers, our composer for the game, got into Unreal Engine 5 and started making his own sound graphs. Uh, we talked about making some music that we could play in the background while you go into a jump, basically, when you're flying through space in that pink zone that we have right now. And Peter came up with this graph, which... Uh, goes far beyond the complexity of anything that I have tried to do before. It took me a little while to try and even understand what he was doing here, but uh, let me play some of this and you can listen to it for a second. I'll explain how it works. Okay, it's a beautiful piece and I could let it play on for a while, but the architecture behind this is pretty wild. He's got three audio players that are simultaneously playing and mixing and phasing between each other on a sine wave. I actually don't understand all the logic behind how they're mixed. In addition to two layers pulling in different arrays of melody and little chimes on top of it creating what is basically a very short looping song that will never repeat itself and tonally stay similar he also has a sort of darker version in case we're traveling in more hostile space versus more friendly space we'll figure out some logic to that later but it's a pretty robust system and I'm excited to get a little bit more of these warp sounds built in we're, we're doing a bit of a warp effect and sound effect refactor in the near future now truthfully uh, a huge amount of our time over the past several weeks has been spent optimizing and doing a performance refactor we lost a lot of performance rushing to get a prototype build of the game ready. We added in a lot of stuff. We weren't really profiling and testing frequently enough, and we lost a huge amount of FPS, which we did manage to gain back, but it required us to do a bit of a performance refactor, which Rich kind of spearheaded, and then we all sort of pitched in in different ways, optimizing textures, sounds, improving material efficiency, all kinds of things to help improve performance, but uh, Rich is gonna talk about one of the more interesting aspects of profiling our game and what was dragging us down. A little while back, I noticed on the Steam Deck we were getting really bad performance, and by bad performance, I mean 12 frames per second. It's pretty bad. We all immediately had our theories about what's causing the performance problems, but rather than just go off instinct, it's best to use some profiling software to really determine what the actual problem is. Right now, I'm going to show you uh, the main piece of software I use to pinpoint performance problems. It's called Insights. It's built into Unreal, and it lets you get really down to how many milliseconds, microseconds, and nanoseconds each function in your game is taking. Another nice thing about this is I can connect with IP address over my Wi-Fi directly to the Steam Deck and profile directly from it. When I open one of these up, you can see a really rough overview of the performance of the game. Um, you start out with this view up at the top. Um, this line here up at the very top is 15 frames per second. The taller these bars are, the worse the game is performing. 
down here, we're getting close to 60 frames per second. This is when the game is paused and the menu is showing. So that's not what we want to look at. When I'm playing the game, I'm getting uh, 15, 16 FPS. Not great. You can drill down into every frame and then you get this view of what's happening every frame. It's super detailed. You get to see every function that's called. You can see all the threads. This is the poor performing area over here. So if we drill down into a single frame, there's lots of issues here. Um, one of them that stood out to me a lot is this slate task. It's very vague. It just says slate. What slate is, is the technology that powers the UI, the like the HUD and the menus. I suspected there's something going on with the HUD. We all had suspicions about different things in the HUD. Like there's a camera for that little targeting window that maybe is eating up performance or the minimap has a lot of little icons. It's rendering, uh, it's constantly recalculating their position. It's also got another camera that's rendering those uh, asteroids. Of all of our suspicions, none of us actually got it right. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Since I'm still finding my way around insights, and all I have here is just this big chunk that says Slate UI. Uh, I'm going to move into a different technique for narrowing this down. So I want to do this process of elimination where I turn off the mini map to see how much that improves things. I turn off the target window to see how much that improves things and so on. So I added some cheat commands. Let's try turning off the mini map. So mini map physical zero. That's gone now. No big impact, no noticeable impact on the frames at all. Uh, let's turn off the uh, target window. Target window's gone. Frame rate still pretty much unaffected. Let's turn off the nav ring. The nav ring is visible zero. Okay, whole nav ring is gone. Uh, it's pushing into the 70s a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell with this little frame rate meter. Next thing I'm going to do is going to jump it up quite a bit, and that's going to be turning off the instrument panel. Look at that. We jumped up to 80 something frames per second just by turning off the instrument panel. That's not what I would have expected. We'll turn everything back on and I'll show you why that's causing a problem. What turned out to be the huge performance hog is there's a little glow around these icons, a little glow around the text. This is a post-process effect that's doing a little bit of blurring by redrawing everything here like, I don't know, four times, eight times, 10 times, however, whatever number I set there. There's a standard way in the industry of doing glows. It's basically just having an image behind things. So I knew about that standard way of doing things, but as often happens, you just want to try something <laughs> and see if it works. Maybe things have gotten better and I can use a shader to generate a glow. That is not the case. We're going to go back to basically images to create glows where we need them. Now, one small bit of info that Rich left out here is that we actually managed to bump the Steam Deck's performance back up to 60. Uh, and depending on the situation, it could fluctuate between 60 and 90 FPS. So we got our performance back and we even have some pretty good ideas about where else to make some big optimizations for the game. So as you can see, we have been very busy with all things game development. Uh, once again, if you want to follow the project more closely, check out our Discord and also you can wishlist the game. Those links are down below. Uh, things that I'm looking forward to showing in the near future, I don't want to commit to saying they'll be in the next devlog, but we are really moving towards a mining gameplay uh, system in game. We're building all the pieces for it right now. And it's just a matter of setting aside some time to actually build out the system and connect them all together. So I'm very excited to show that off. I'm very excited to get a damage painting system into the game in the near future and then move on to the many, many more steps we have ahead of us. But uh, I'm enjoying every moment along the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.